There it is. Very nice. Welcome to St. John this morning. Uh, it is a good day to be here, and of course, the, it seems the weather is nice. I hope you all had a uh, happy fourth week, uh, but now we'll take time to focus on God's Word together. Let's begin with a hymn of invocation. With the Lord begin your task, 869.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by the thought of our mind. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. O you who have been my help, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Shall I fear? Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me and they breathe out by all hands. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. O you who have been my help, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Trinity is from 1 Kings chapter 19. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hatzael to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, Abu Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And anyone who escapes the sword of Hatzael shall put Jehu to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the needs that have not bowed to Baal. 
and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom his almighty lies. The sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my love. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand our pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Amen. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Epistles from 1 Peter, chapter 3. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, 
brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, but his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when he had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus preached the word to the multitudes from the boat. Afterward, after he preached, finished preaching, he then confirmed his word with a divine miracle. He told Peter to row into the deep water and let out the nets. They caught a great haul of fish, although there had not been even a nibble through the whole night. And the net tore, but still held a great mass of fish. The boats began to sink, and yet did not sink. And both fish and men came safely on land. And now, Peter and the rest are called to do the same in the world with the word as the dragnet, to gather in the little fishes, that's you, through water, baptism, into his boat, the church. And so we heard of Peter's calling. We also heard of Elisha's being called. Is Jesus saying then that we should all forsake the needs of our family and livelihood and commit to church vocations? Does he call everyone to be a pastor or a teacher, musician or some other churchly vocation? Some are called to ministry that depends on the congregation's love for income and other needs, to be sure. But not all are called, like Peter, to walk away from their work and to pursue a new career at Jesus' command. Not all are called to churchly vocations, but all are called to live as Christians in their vocations. Obedience to the third commandment and obedience to the seventh commandment may occur together. Indeed, they should occur together. The third and seventh commandment do not contradict one another. For adherence to the seventh cannot be fully God-pleasing unless it is accompanied by obedience to the third commandment. Of course, you're asking, what are the third and seventh commandments? Maybe you remember. In the third commandment, the Lord commands us to, to keep the Sabbath day holy. That is, we are to diligently hear his word, not merely holding a weekly external Sabbath worship, which we surely do, but to daily keep a lasting spiritual Sabbath within one's heart. That is, long for the heavenly treasures of God's word and to abstain from what it's, the word forbids. That's the third commandment. And then in the seventh commandment, God, the Lord God commands us not to steal. That is, we are to be content with what we have and to work to provide for ourselves by our own hands. You see, these two commandments, the Sabbath day and working, do not strive against one another, they're both God-given, as we'll hear next, in next week's Old Testament text. Both are God-given. Therefore, obedience to one commandment goes with adherence to the other. Christians often gather together, even on work days, to hear God's word and to nourish themselves by it. Those of you who have farms know that, well, there's never a day off. But yet, you took time this morning to be here, to be nourished by God's word, maybe even to give a miraculous catch like he did for Peter. Work in your earthly vocation does not hinder or harm attention to God's word, so long as you keep them straight. This is why Jesus constrained Peter to come on board to his boat and to tend to the fisherman's trade after he had preached from the boat. God has ordained that man should eat his bread in the sweat of his brow. Genesis 3, so that by working, our flesh may be tamed and we are subject again to obedience to the Spirit, recognizing all things comes from the Lord. That which the Lord God himself orders cannot be opposed to God. That which the Lord God himself ordains for us cannot get in the way of piety or fear of him. Our work cannot get in the way of worship. We must serve the Lord God in our vocation by true faith within our hearts, with godly reverence and love, 
by showing love to our neighbor and by patient and humble expectation that God will bless that work. But also interrupting our work at a special time to hear God's word is not the only way to serve him, although he certainly gives us that. But even in the middle of our work, we can lift up our hearts to God and sing a hymn of praise. See what your coworkers think of that. <laughs> or begin or end your day, your work day, with thanksgiving or in prayer. Or maybe you can multitask and you can listen to the recording of the congregation of prayer while you work. Or use one of the many devotional resources, some of which you see in our bulletin. There's many ways to sanctify your day by the word so that you can even go about your work in the word. For by the divine word and prayer, all our deeds are sanctified, says Paul to Timothy. This view, when viewed properly, obedience to the third and the seventh commandments are in no way contradictory, even though we often set them at odds. For obedience to the seventh commandment, you shall not steal, in other words, you should work, is not wholly pleasing to God unless it is accompanied by attention to his word, the third commandment. As a matter of fact, if we are to feed ourselves by the work of our hands and to do so with joy and contentment, we have to begin and end with God's blessing. If God is to bless our work, then we, we must celebrate the Sabbath both inwardly and outwardly, weekly and even daily. Because breaking the Sabbath is actually punished by a curse. Peter first loaned Christ his boat, as we heard today, and then he caught the great haul of fish, even though previously he had caught none. What's the difference but God's word? Therefore, take care first for your soul. Take Christ into the little boat of your heart and let him teach and work in it. And then all your other work, the work of your hands, will be blessed, regardless of what vocation he has called you to. The third commandment comes first, and then the seventh follows. They're put in order for a reason. Obedience to the third commandment should be first to us, and then we will follow with the seventh commandment. First attend to God's word, and then attend to your work. Well, this is of course true, because none of the work that you can do, even the most noble of vocations, can achieve faith, that is trust in God. This is why we first begin with prayer. We pray, for example, for daily bread. If we could accomplish this through our work, we wouldn't pray for it. <laughs> so why should we humbly pray for it, except so that God give it. If we are to receive our daily bread from God's hand, we must also then follow God's admonition. As he says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added to you. God's kindness is the wellspring of every blessing, even the blessing of work, even earthly goods. Whatever is not drawn from the spring of God's word cannot be blessed. As the psalmist says, a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of the wicked. Why is this? And it has to do with the heart. We can only accomplish our work, our daily work, if our hearts are set right by God through his word. With prayer and thanksgiving, the righteous man has received the little he has from God. He knows it, he believes it, and thus that little he has is blessed and sanctified. Conversely, the godless, they build up a store of temporal goods by their own hands, by their own doing, often through illicit means, against God's will. And of course then, lacking God's word, their goods cannot be blessed and sanctified and become a curse to them, like the dragon's hoard. The righteous man possesses the little he has with a good conscience. But the godless man suffers a constant nagging conscience. Tell me, who is actually the richer of the two? The righteous man who has little but has God, his greatest treasure. He is the one who is rich in God. And his work will be blessed. Or is it the godless man who does not have God's grace? And despite all of his hard work and his great wealth, is he not poor even though he possesses a kingdom? For what has the man who does not have God and owns all things but a guilty conscience and his sin 
and thus eternal death and damnation. Essential to our daily life is a strong faith. And with that faith comes a longing for heavenly riches, for God's word. And then also with that word, we learn a profound disregard for earthly things so that our heart clings alone to God as our greatest possession and treasure. As the psalmist says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So Jesus has called you today and rightly ordered your life for faith that your work may be a blessing. He called you today to receive with your hearts his saving word and the means to which he has attached that word of forgiveness. He's preached his word into your hearts to restore you to faith, to bring you through the water of your baptism again in absolution, and once again restored you to the holy ark of the Christian church, to be nurtured, restored, confident, and with a clean conscience. It's true, for your daily task, he may call you into more specific church vocations, thanks be to God, or he may call you to labor at home or on the farm or in the factory. Regardless, with whatever task the Lord sets before you, remain in Jesus and his word, and everything else will follow and be blessed according to his gracious will. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We confess our common Christian faith and show love for one another by confessing together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God of hosts, sustain those called to be fishers of men in Christ's church, that they would not be discouraged when they toil all night and take nothing, but continue to let down their nets at his word according to that calling. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, make your servants jealous for your name especially our synod president, our district president, our circuit visitor, and our pastor, all of whom your son has called to be fishers of men in our midst. Give them courage faithfully to proclaim your word alone. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, in every generation, you preserve a remnant who have not bowed their knees to the false gods of this world. By your spirit, keep us faithful to you 
and grant repentance to those who have fallen away. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, grant zeal among our members to make a defense for the hope that is in us. May our homes be welcoming places where visitors are drawn to the word of life as it is proclaimed and lived out among us. We ask your blessings upon the households of our church, but especially upon that of Deb, Shannon, Sam, Joe, and Maureen, those celebrating their wedding anniversary this week, especially Chad and Mindy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, keep us from trusting the wisdom of the worldly wise and debaters of this age above the truth of your word, that we would not perish with those who reject the word of the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, by your spirit, help us to bless others and not repaying evil for evil or reviling for reviling, that as your children we may seek peace and pursue it with all people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, you bless us in many and various rich ways. We celebrate with those rejoicing in their birthday this week. Gavin, Merlin, Don, Jim, Jesse, Sandra, and Doug. Those rejoicing in the gift of their new birth by baptism. Alexia, Lisa, Eugene, Kyle, Paul, Donica, Linda, Jared, Kira, and Jean. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God of hosts, bless our homebound, Marcy, Marion, Dan, Paul, Dolores, Merlin, and Pauline. All those who have requested our prayers for illness, treatment, or recovery, especially Dale and Pam, Joe, Melanie, Kelsey, Christopher, Marcy, Brad, Gus, Eileen, Ron, Doug, Bev, Joan, Pat, Wendell, and Darlene, as well as all those who suffer in body or mind in our midst. Since Christ is at their right hand, they cannot be shaken. Make their flesh dwell securely and give them peace in the promise that you will not abandon their souls to Sheol. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, your Son is our chosen portion and our cup forgiving and nourishing us with his body and blood. Grant that we may receive him humbly and in faith, that you may hold our lot secure in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O living God, Lord of hosts, you have given us your holy word and provided bountifully for all our needs. We confess that we are unworthy of all these mercies and have rather deserved punishment, yet we implore you, Forgive our sins and bless us in our various callings, that by your strength we may be sustained and defended now and forever, and so praise you eternally. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We greet one another with the peace of Christ.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the post-communion collect. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated. A few announcements before you depart uh, to Bible class, right? Which is where you're going to go. Um, first is, uh, you know, I know the cows don't milk themselves. The tractor can't fix itself. Or as my dad said, the sheep won't shear themselves. But sometimes the fish do uh, catch themselves, apparently, as we heard today in the gospel. That was my joke that I left out of the sermon. So I guess it wasn't that funny. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so a few notes. First, the, uh, the sign up for... PTL Music in the Park, both volunteer and donations. There's an online form. You can get it on our, uh, both the school or the church Facebook page. So if you're not on Facebook, um, talk to me. I'll get you the link. Otherwise, go there. You fill out the form. You say what you're going to donate. We do need donations for that. Now's your chance. Um, so do that soon. Also, um, more opportunities for prayer and to be in God's Word, as you heard in the sermon. Of course, congregation of prayer. I encourage you to pray that with your uh, family at home or, or spouse. Uh, or if you prefer, it is available online, as I mentioned, so you can join us in the morning, so do that live at 9, uh, or you can just listen or watch later in the day. And even if you don't want to use like your fancy pants, smartphone applications, whatever, you can just call in later in the day, and you can just hear it on a phone, just by calling in a phone call. So that's available to you. All the notes about that are in the service folder. And uh, Wednesday evenings, we have divine service, 
And if you didn't already know, Wednesday night service is not the same as Sunday previous or Sunday following. So some of you take advantage of this. You come on Wednesday night to supplement uh, your life of faith. So I encourage you to do that if, you, if you're so moved by the Spirit. All right, so Bible class today, Ezekiel 30, and we'll see you all soon.